Hello, everyone. Let us read the Bible. Romans, chapter 3 from verse 9. Romans, chapter 3 from verse 9. Can you see the screen? Yes, I will also read to the screen. What then are we better than they know in no wise? For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand it. There is none that seek it after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of apse is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it is said to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth propitiation through faith for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him who believeth in Jesus. What is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith, do we then make the void the law through faith? God forbid ye, we establish the law. After verse 31. As we think about spiritual life, keeping the Ten Commandments well. Keep, and if we go to service, then we think that we are doing spiritual life. But what the Bible is telling us, the reason why God has given us the law is not to keep the law and to keep it well, but there's a greater meaning behind it. Because we don't know what kind of person we are. More so, God gave us the law saying that you should try to keep it. And we cannot keep it. And that's what the Bible says. If we, if we can keep the law and if it is possible, then there is no need for the blood of Jesus. There is no need for Jesus to come to this world. But many people today, they think that if they keep the law very well, they are living good spiritual life. And the scriptures that we read today, Keeping the law very well, it is unprofitable. That's the only conclusion that we can come to. Why? The reason why God gave us the law, to keep the law well and to be blessed, not so. Hey, you cannot keep the law. You can only be cursed. Therefore, you must come before Jesus to receive the forgiveness of sin. With this significance, that is why God gave us the law. The people who don't know the law very well, oh, you know, go to church and keep the commandments. They think that that's good spiritual life. But that is absurd. The law isn't just one or two, but if you keep the law, you get to keep keeping the law and you cannot disobey it. So God 
has never given us the law thinking that we will keep it. God gave us the law to realize how evil and filthy and dirty we are. I cannot do it. I cannot do it according to my own strength. I need the help of Jesus. I need the grace of God. Without it, I cannot do anything. When you realize this, it is not me being saved by keeping the law. Uh, I have no other way. Someone needs to save me and deliver me from sin. Jesus, that is why He died on the cross to save me from my sins. And Jesus being crucified on the cross, He has paid the punishment for all of my sins. Therefore, I have been made righteous. So God is saying to us, Hey, you are justified, you are righteous. We have received justification. And so God says we are justified. All we need to say is, I am righteous. But people say, no, I'm a sinner, please forgive me. And it is very absurd because people, they don't know the Bible. God, He knew that man cannot keep the law. Hey, you can try to keep it. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in His sight. That's what it says in the Bible. And no one can become justified in before God through the law. But many people today, they don't know the, the deep meaning behind the words of God. And they only see the surface. Uh, if I just keep the law very well, if I'm good. I attended church ever since I was young. And while I was attending church, together with my friends, I did a lot of bad things. And so I would do these bad things in a kind way. When I would steal the melons in the melon fields. And so the melon... So it's not a problem if you pluck and steal one melon. But if you, steal, if you try to steal one melon while trampling on 12 or dozens of melons, then that becomes toil for the farmer. So because I'm, I'm a believer of Jesus and I go to church, so I try not to stomp on all the melons. So I would, I would very, I would tread lightly and I would avoid stepping on the melons. But my friends, they would just bite all the melons and throw it away. But I would only smell which ones are ripe, and I would only pluck out two melons because I I would go to church. So even when I would steal, I would steal in a very nice way. And so, you know, whether so. If you compare the sins, then it doesn't make a difference of how I do it. And rather than not committing sin, trying to be kind, but, but committing sin and realizing that I cannot do it. I need the grace of Jesus. Without the grace of Jesus, I can't, I can't do it. And realizing your sins and coming and returning to the Lord, I'm a person who can only fall into desolation and destruction. But through Jesus Christ dying on the cross for me, I have received the forgiveness of sin. And believing in this is what the Bible is teaching us. But many people, they are teaching each other to keep the Ten Commandments. When, when people see each other, when God sees each other, people telling each other to keep the Ten Commandments, what do you think you know? How can you keep the Ten Commandments? You know, God cannot yell at us, but I feel like He would. God, He knew that we would sin. And God, He wanted us to realize sin. And He wanted us to come before the grace of Jesus and receive the forgiveness. And that is the path which He has forged for us. But many Christian leaders, many pastors, they say you have to be good, you have to not sin. You have already sinned. Will you not be a sinner because you don't sin anymore? That's correct. You have already sinned. And we are already born with the nature to sin. So, it, so my friend said it's not fun to just eat. It's fun to just steal and eat. I, have, I had some friends like that back, back then. But when, I, you know, when you read the Bible, Romans chapter 3, 
Romans chapter 3 verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that the g e n t that they are all under the, the under sin because everyone is under sin. There's, so the Jews are no better. The Jews are not cleaner. They're all sinners. So Jews and Gentiles alike, all of them has already been under sin. And that is what God has declared. It says that God has declared that we are under sin. And when we realize that we are under sin, then we must understand that Jesus, God has sent Jesus to save us from sin. And through the death of Jesus on the cross, He has paid the price of our sin. And He has paid the price of our sin. And He has cleansed us from sin. And then, what it says here, and it says, no, are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we are both proved Jews and Gentiles that we are under sins. There is no righteous, no, not one. So, people who go to church says, oh, I'm I'm righteous. I don't sin. I've been I've been living good. So I've been stealing in the melon farms, but I thought I was different from the, all my friends who were stealing. But no, I'm no different from them. I'm I'm a sinner. I'm a thief. But me me thinking me thinking that I'm not giving harm to the farmer or the farm, and stealing in a nice way. I'm thinking I'm better. That's really a, laughable. Even when I'm the f- farmer, oh, you know, this, he, this guy, he stole in a nice way and I'll forgive him. There's no, nothing like this. And in our thoughts, we fell into our thoughts. And because we don't know the deep meaning behind the will of God. And God, He, he has prepared everything to save us and deliver us from sin. And so that way is a different way from what we think. God told us to keep the Ten Commandments. God gave us the Ten Commandments and told us to keep it. But the reason why He told us to keep it, hey, try to keep it. You think you can keep it? You can't keep it. And you realize you can't keep it, you should come to me. You should not rely on your own strength, but you should rely upon my strength, rely upon my son Jesus who delivers you from sin. That is God's will. But many pastors today, They say keep the Ten Commandments. They emphasize the Ten Commandments. They emphasize living well, to live kind, and diligently do this. Fundamentally, my heart and the Bible is in a totally different direction. And after this evening service, I'll be flying to Europe and visiting many countries. Countries. I was invited by many countries to go for the conference, and so even the choir was invited. And so I believe that they departed yesterday, and so today the choir couldn't come and perform this morning. And I'm I'm not sure. Maybe they already arrived. And I don't talk about complicated things. Oh, I told them you can. I told. I tell people you cannot keep the law. There's nobody who can come in the standard of God by keeping the law. You must first give up on keeping the law to become righteous, because it says there is none righteous, no, not one, to those who try to keep the law. If we can keep the law, and even just even a single person can receive the forgiveness of sin and become holy by keeping the commandments, then God would have never sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Oh, you think you can keep it? Then you can try harder, try harder. There's there is this, the person who has kept the law. You should learn from him. But the reason why God has sent Jesus to die on the cross for us, because. Not even a single person in the eyes of God has become holy by the commandments. 
if if it was so, then he would not have sent Jesus. There is no righteous, no not one who are trying to keep the law. If you see here, verse 19, Now we know that whatsoever the law saith, and it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may be become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be... Is there any flesh that will be justified in His sight? No. Yes, you can keep it half. You can you can keep it half heartedly, but if you can if you perfectly to keep it, that is impossible. If everyone were to if someone were to say that they they kept all the commandments, they are liars. We cannot keep the law. God says you tr- you can try to keep the law, but you you will realize that you can't. Ah, I can never receive the forgiveness of sin by keeping the law. Then what should I do? What should I do? That is why you should look toward Jesus. That is Jesus who has died for your sins. He has solved and resolved the problem of your sins. He has forgiven your sins. But people who are just clinging on to the law, if despite Jesus making you righteous, if you see the Bible here, Romans, Chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, freely by His grace, we are justified. Everyone, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. No matter how much we try our best, we cannot reach God's glory. We have all fallen short. We have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What comes next? Because we have sinned, we are unable to reach. We are people who who are unable to reach the glory of God. No matter how much effort, how much work, or how much deeds that we put forth, we cannot become cleansed or washed through that. God has sent Jesus to be born in this world. If you look at Matthew, Jesus was received, he received the baptism of the Jordan River by John the Baptist. I should be baptized by you, but you come to be baptized by me, John said. He is the Son of God. The Son of God coming to me to be baptized by me? That doesn't make any sense. But Jesus said, Suffer to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus receiving the baptism by John from John, how can this fulfill all righteousness? So people say, so Jesus receiving the baptism from John is to transfer the sins onto Jesus. If you look at the Old Testaments, when they gave the sin offering, they would catch the little lamb and you must lay your hands on the lamb. And through the laying on of hands, your sin will be passed over to the lamb. Do you understand? And when you kill the lamb, if you, if you kill a lamb before the laying on of hands, then you will not resolve your sins. But first, when you lay your hands upon the head of the lamb, and so the Bible, it is so amazing. When if you want to resolve the unravel the Bible, then you must connect the dots of the Bible. 
And I have read the Bible many times. And especially Leviticus chapter 4 about the sin offering. If you look at Leviticus chapter 16, it says, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 21. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat. What is this talking about? I, I am supposed to die, but do you understand? the sins which I committed, all of my sins, you transfer to the Lamb. And so you lay, your hand, you lay your hands upon the goat and that's when your sins will pass over to the goat. So my sins will pass over to the goat. Do you understand? And so my sins will pass over to the goat and when the goat dies, he dies for my sins. And Jesus In the Jordan River, he met John the Baptist. John the Baptist, he met Jesus and Jesus asked, to, asked him to baptize him. But John was shocked. You are the Son of God. I should be baptized by you, but why do you come to me? And he rejected him. But Jesus said at that time, Suffer to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill all righteousness, you must wash away all sins, and you must lay your lay your sins upon the head of Jesus. Leviticus chapter 16, verse 21, what it says. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins. And then what? Putting them upon the head of the goat. Then, I am not the one who pays the price of my sins, but you lay your hands, lay your sins upon the head of the goat. Then John was in the Jordan River and Jesus came to John the Baptist to receive baptism. John, he saw Jesus. He's the Son of God. How could he be baptized by me? Why do you come to me to be baptized? That's what John said. But Jesus said to John, Suffer to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And so, in order to fulfill all righteousness, Jesus received the laying on of hands from John. And after he received the laying on of hands from John, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Right? And so the, the day before, he received the laying on of hands and he received the sins of the world. And through his death on the cross, we have received the cleansing of our sins. Do you understand? But Satan makes us think so complicated. Saying, oh, you have to keep the Sabbath. You got to go to 10 service. You must, you must give your offerings and keep the law. And making us think all these complicated things is because we don't know the Bible precisely. If we look at Romans, I apologize. Romans chapter 3 verse 9 what then are we better than they no and no wise for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin as it was written there is none righteous no not one there is none that understand there is none that seeketh after God they are all gone out of their way and they are all become Unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Sup With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. 
and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Next, verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith is saved to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. If you look at verse 21, not, but now the right, not the righteousness by keeping the law, but the righteousness of, of God without the law manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. That is Jesus Christ. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ upon all and upon all them that believe, there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. This is the plan of God. To, to repeat, our sins were passed over to Jesus, and Jesus, He received the, the judgment of our sins by being crucified on the cross. And like in the Old Testament, how the lamb, when you do the laying on the pants, then pass over your sins onto the lamb. And through the, the killing of the lamb, your sins are forgiven. Likewise, through the killing, through the death of Jesus, all of our sins has been washed. And when Jesus, he received the laying on of hands from John, all of our sins passed over to Jesus. And John, Jesus came to John saying, baptize me. But at first, John said, no, I cannot, you're the son of God. But Jesus said, be, suffer to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And only this way all of our sins can be washed. All of the, only this way where all of our sins can be cleansed. And that is what he meant by all righteousness. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The next verse, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, freely by his grace. Freely by God's grace. God's grace. We have done nothing. But Jesus, through His redemption, He has redeemed us through the crucifixion on the cross. And then, it was then where all of our sins were cleansed and we were justified. Do you understand? In the Old Testament, when you, when you lay your hands upon the head of the Lamb and you kill the Lamb and receive the forgiveness of sin. Likewise, when John the Baptist laid his hands upon the head of Jesus, and the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And so the, the day before, John baptized Jesus. Therefore, all of our sins were passed over to Jesus. And through Jesus being crucified on the cross, our sins has eternally ended. And it's not that we have to pray for the forgiveness of sins. We must have faith that our sins are forgiven. Do you understand, everyone? God has sent Jesus. And... God has laid all of our sins upon the head of Jesus. And when Jesus received the laying on of hands, and just like how the Lamb dies for your sins, and you, re you receive forgiveness, that is how we have received this forgiveness and atonement. Jesus has died for us. And Jesus has, re God has laid all of our sins upon the head of Jesus. And Jesus, when He said it is finished, that is when all of our sins has been finished. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. To the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, freely by His grace, we are justified. Before I went to South America, and in the in a Catholic church, the priest, he knew that I came with the choir, and he contacted me. Can your choir come? and perform for 50 minutes at our church and sing at our church because the choir is famous. And after I finish after I finish the service this evening, I'll be going to Europe for the mission trip. The choir has already left. That's why the choir didn't come today. And it was our it was the second dairy choir that performed. It was the Chindale choir that performed this morning. 
And so the Chindalek Choir performed today, and so it was, it was a wonderful performance. And after I finish this evening's service, I'll be flying to Europe. And I'll be visiting several countries there. I'll be visiting several countries, and I'll be visiting the churches. I was invited there to have a conference. And before I went to South America, the conference was so good. And so many other countries are there trying to invite me. So if I want to visit every single country, I have to be out every time. So I cannot visit every single country. So I'm, I'll be visiting a few countries in Europe this time. And I'm so, I'm not sure about anything else, but I'm, so I fly very well. And so most people, when they fly airplanes, they get so tired and exhausted. And so, but these days, the, uh, the cushions on the airplane are so nice. You can you can you can read a book. You can go and watch out the window. So I really ride the airplanes very well. I think God has uh, adjusted my body so that I can ride the planes well, so that I can travel overseas. And the planes are getting better and better over time. And before, a long time ago, when I rode the planes, and so it was a very fast plane. And they would, they said that you had to raise the altitude. And the, the planes these days, is they fly a much higher altitude. And they said that I rode those planes because I had no time. I was, and so we, we went higher up in the altitude. And the higher altitude that you go up, the, the airplanes, and so there's less air resistance. Everyone, air, so air is not all the same. So air, so he heavier air is, is lower and lighter air is higher. And so the f resistance will decrease with the air when you go higher up in altitude. And as I ha had a one-day conference, and so I had to go to a different place to have another conference, so I had to ride that plane. So I didn't know before. I didn't know. I'm not sure how high the altitude was, but the airplane went up very high, and I rode that airplane. And usually, the general airplanes, they have, there's, you can feel the turbulence because of the air resistance, but you felt no air resistance. There was no turbulence for that airplane. Usually, air, maybe it was not ten, tenfolds, but it was much quicker than other planes. And I, I believe that these planes will become more popular. So I couldn't, even, I couldn't even feel if the plane was flying or not. And that's how much the planes have developed over the years. As we live our lives, our methods, the most important thing is, is we must repent and receive the forgiveness of sin what does repentance mean repentance means to forsake all of your ways if i have my ways and try to follow jesus's way it doesn't work out very well um, i'm praying i try to keep the law i try to keep the commandments and if you try to follow jesus by this then it is impossible you must give up everything i will do everything for you that's what Jesus is telling us. You can't do it. I will do everything for you. That's what Jesus is saying. The Old Testament, the reason why the goats and the lambs died, why was it? It was the foreshadow of Jesus. Jesus, He dies for us, and He saves us from all things. Don't worry. I will deliver you and cleanse you from all things. That is what the Bible is telling us. As we live our spiritual life, me being good, me paying tithes, me praying a lot, me not trying to commit sin. That's not the way to go to heaven. That is absurd way to go to heaven. We have already committed lots of sin, too much sin. We committed all the sins already. And, oh, you know, I don't smoke, but that guy smokes. I'm good. You know, we're judging in our hearts. And how many people like that? You are all you are like that person. And anyway, we are like that. And we must 
honestly think we have no way to receive forgiveness. There's no way for me to be living righteously. Oh, Jesus has washed away my sins and receiving this salvation, it is so simple and easy. But people's hearts, many pastors, they tell you to keep the law to be blessed. They tell you to pay tithes. They tell you to do this good. And things have become so complicated. And you're so busy doing all these things and you only know Jesus theoretically and you have not received Jesus in your heart. And you are still remaining as a sinner. You may not do and you may not be able to do anything else, but if you simply receive Jesus Christ, Jesus has died for you on the cross, and your sins has been resolved and ended. I am holy. I am righteous. You can say these things because God says that He has sanctified me. God, He has died. Jesus has died for my sins. Jesus has paid the price of my sins. I have no sin. But, we cannot do this because we're deceived by Satan. And we really cannot say the words, I have no sin. How can we say we have no sin? I'm so evil. You, you don't say that you have no sin because you're not evil. You say that you have no sin because Jesus has washed away all of your sins. You think that you have no sin because you're good and you have never sinned before? No. Do you understand? Do you understand? Many pastors today, they tell you to be good. We know we cannot live good. We must receive the goodness of Jesus. And the goodness of Jesus becomes ours. And the only way for me to go to heaven is not to be good and to sin less. And many elders, when they, before they die, Many elders, they are elders because they have a lot of money. And they give lots of offering to the church. And they give lots of offering to the church. And the, and the church members, they, they raise them up and say, Oh, we don't, there's no deacon like you. There's no elder like you. You're so great. You're so, you're so extraordinary. And I cannot be like you. And that's how the elders, that's the kind of position elders are in. But elders, when they become sick and they lie on their, on their deathbed, they are reminded of their sin. And they know that they have not received forgiveness. And they are afraid. Oh, what do I do about my sin? I still have sin. What do I do? They're just silent about it. But there's so many elders who die this way. You're an elder. But death is knocking at your door and you have no confidence to go to heaven. And you, with all your heart, with all your soul, you have given an offering and given your heart to the church, but you have sin in your heart. It will drive you mad. It will drive you crazy. And then, oh, and then you die. Not being able to receive the forgiveness of sin. Then you cannot go to heaven. Our, my elder, our elder, and then raising him up, raising them up. And so raising them and, and saying good words about them. But that is not how you receive the forgiveness of sin. Jesus, through His blood, we receive forgiveness. Not by my goodness that I receive forgiveness. Not me keeping the law that I receive forgiveness. Me giving lots of offering, that has nothing to do with forgiveness of sin. Only you need the blood of Jesus. I gave offering... I sold my land and gave it all to the church, gave it all to God. Then if I can't go to heaven, who else can go to heaven? That is talking about your works. People are so pitiful. That is not how you can go to heaven. That is why, even though we have committed sin, we have received the forgiveness of sin. You don't receive the forgiveness of sin because you give a lot of offering, not because you have served the church, not because you have done, you've done this. But only by the blood of Jesus receive the forgiveness of sin. That is why Jesus, through His death, He has died for my sins. He has shed His blood and died for my sins. And it was then where my sins were forgiven. And by faith, you receive that. And that is what you call believing in faith. Jesus has died on the cross 
shed His blood for me, and because I no longer have sin, God tells us that we are justified. Hey, God says you're justified, everyone. You must listen to this voice. Don't try to receive forgiveness. But the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, freely by God's grace. Next, you have been justified. Dear loving brothers and sisters, what are we going to believe? God says that He has justified me. That is what you should believe. Amen. Does God lie? No. God says you're justified, then you're righteous. No, I'm not. I'm a sinner. Please don't say that. If God says you're justified, then say amen and receive it and say I'm righteous. One time, I went to Jinju. So we have the Good News Hapcheon Church. It's a small church. And the Hapcheon Church members said, please come to the Hapcheon Church. And that day, in the evening, I visited the Hapcheon Church. I went, it was late in the evening, around 10 p.m. And we gathered with the church members. And around 20 to 30 members gathered. And I began to share. And after we finished and we were about to close and I was about to go to sleep, there was this young sister who came to visit me. She, she told me she told me that she can no longer live with her husband. And this sister, she got married. She got married to, uh, to, to a devout believer of Jesus. But after they got married, he began to drink. And he didn't just drink, but he only drinks. He, he doesn't eat anything. And he, he drinks in bowls. And this sister, Pastor, I can no longer live with my husband. My husband doesn't go to work anymore, and now I have to go to work. And going to work, the, what is the most painful thing is cleaning up the empty alcohol bottles when, I'm com when I come back home. It's in the living room, it's in the bedroom. Why is that such a pain for you? You should hire, no, you should, you should give the, some coins to the kids and they can clean it up for you. And you can just pay 10 cents. And, and she was laughing. And she said, I told her, don't cry. Tomorrow morning, bring your husband. And the next thing in the morning, she brought her husband. And he woke up in the morning and he drank a bowl of, al bowl of liquor and he was drunk. So I asked him, brother, are you holy? I'm not holy. What does the Bible say? He has sanctified you, right? He says that He has sanctified you, right? And I open up the Bible, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It says that you have been justified, right? Hey, you think you're not justified, but God says that you're justified. That's what it says. Are you right or is the word of God right? Oh, the word of God is right. Then is it true that you are righteous? No, I'm not righteous. Every day he is drinking. How could he be righteous? He may not be righteous, but God says he is justified, right? This is very important. God has justified us. 
Why did he say that we're justified? You don't know, right? It's because you're justified that he, God tells you you're justified. Is that correct? If you're not justified and God said you're justified, then God's a liar. That's why you are justified. Therefore, God said you're justified. And I told that brother, Brother, are you righteous? No, I'm not. Look, open up the Bible, Hebrews chapter 10. I opened up the Hebrews chapter 10. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. I opened up this verse. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Freely by his grace we are justified. God says that you are righteous. You're righteous, right? I'm not righteous. God says you're righteous and you said that you're not righteous. Are you right or is God right? God is right. Yeah, God is, God's words are right. And then you are righteous, right? And so he, he answered, but he said it very softly. And so I, I registered in his mind that he is righteous. If God says you're righteous, then you're righteous. Do you know that? Yes. Are you righteous? And he didn't answer. And so I taught him that he is righteous. Hey, try to say you're righteous. I'm righteous. God said you're righteous. You are righteous. And so we, we uh, I'm right. And so it, it was so funny to me. Oh, I'm righteous. And that day he went home. This brother, her husband, he didn't just drink, but he drank in bowls. He didn't. He doesn't eat. He doesn't eat anything. He only drinks. And the amazing thing is, he was laughing. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm righteous. Uh, I'm justified, and that's how he left. That day he got up. The first thing he does, you know what he does? He drinks. He drinks a bowl of liquor. He will pour the liquor into the bowl. And he poured the liquor into the bowl. And he had no heart to drink. From that day. Really, you know, people like, pe people like that, they cannot quit drinking. And they will go crazy for drinking. But he completely quit drinking. And he didn't drink at all. And that church, that church, that couple, they came to church so well. And I told that brother, hey, you should come to our missionary school. You should become a pastor. And he said, yes. And then he, that couple came to the, the missionary school. Now they're pastoring in a small church. And they are doing it so gracefully. And the thoughts that we have, if we just simply put that aside, and no matter how dirty of a sinner you are, if God says you're justified, then you're righteous. Is that correct? No matter how evil you are, if God says that you are sanctified, then you are holy. Am I right? Everyone, for you to be righteous and holy is not the words of Pastor Oksu Park, but it is the words of God. If you look in the Bible, it says, Romans chapter 3, verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are under, the law, under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand it. There is none that seeketh after God. They have all gone out of their way. They have be together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues, they have used to see the open... The poison of asp is under their lips, and whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Their destruction and misery are in their ways. And so if you look at verse 19, Now we know that what things soever the law saith is saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, that all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. By the law, you can never be justified. And the important thing is verse 21. 
But now, outside the law, without the law, there is the righteousness of God being manifested, not from the law. Not the righteousness of the law, but the righteousness of God without the law. Before in the Old Testament, you do the sin offering by catching the goats and the lambs, and you lay your hands upon the goats, and your sins will pass over to the goat. And when the, you lay your hands upon the goat, you will kill the goat and shed his blood. And that blood will forgive your sins. And that is how the sin offering was done in the Old Testament. That is how you receive the forgiveness of sin. And Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. And with His blood, He took His blood to the horns of the altar in the heavenly tabernacle and washed our sins. Because this world is a temporal world, there is a past, present, and future. And in the, but the world of God, there is no past, there is no future, only the present. Do you understand? That is why all, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And because our sins are washed away forever, that's why us being righteous is forever. Our life is forever. That's why God says that you are righteous. He, we have received this redemp eternal redemption. This brother, he didn't even drink a drop of liquor. And a month after, I heard that news a month later about him not drinking. And how, so I didn't see them, but I saw their picture together. They took a few pictures together, and I saw those pictures that they took. They were like in a flower, flower field, and they, were they took some other pictures. And really, they changed so much. And... And so they came to the, our missionary school, received training, and now he became a pastor. And I dispatched him to a church. And I visited his church recently. He doesn't have much church members, but they're so happy. They live such a happy life. And so completely different from his previous husband. And his, he has completely changed. And the wife is so happy. God changing us. God changing our hearts. God is so good at that. And we must receive the word of God. It's not that we should change ourselves, but just believe the fact that we have already been changed. Don't try, to, don't try not to commit sin, but believe in the word of God that tells you that you are righteous. And by the blood of Jesus, that your sins are washed, receive that in your heart by faith. And that itself is sufficient. And us being righteous, it's not us being righteous because we have not sinned, but because God, His Son, God sent His Son, Jesus, and through Jesus receiving our sins, and John laid his hands on Jesus, and that's when the sins of the world passed over to Jesus. And that is when the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world world and the sin of the world Oaks, Pastor Oaks Park is included in the sin of the world, amen all have sinned and all people's sins are included in the sin of the world and Jesus has washed our sins eternally then we shouldn't commit sin anymore, right? The Bible doesn't say that we shouldn't commit sin anymore. Oh, does that mean that we can't, we can't sin? No. The interesting thing is, you know, there's nobody who would not commit sin. And so people who, even the people who commit sin, by the blood of Jesus, they can receive cleansing and God has made it so that you can be washed to go to heaven. When you go to the shower, when you go to the bathhouse, 
washing your hands and feet and your body. No, there's nothing more cleaner than the washing of Jesus of our sins. And so our sins have been washed. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have both proved, we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, no, not one. There is none that understands, there is none that seeketh after God. They all have gone out of their way. They are become, together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. Their poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. And their feet is swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. And there is no fear of God before their eyes. Next, verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it is saved, it saved to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his life, for by the law is a knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law, not by keeping the law, but through the death of Jesus, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ upon all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Everyone, is it hard to believe this? Everyone, is it hard to believe this? Oh, uh, uh, no, I have a lot of sin. Is that so? God, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, freely by His grace, we are justified. This morning, to all of you who are sitting here, God is saying to all of you, you are all justified. I justified you. It's not me, but it is God who justified you. God says to you, you are justified. God says, hey, you're justified. Believe this, everyone. Believe the word of God. Hey, you're sanctified. Your sins are all washed. The blood of Jesus has ended your sin. Today, many churches, many churches, they still say, I'm a sinner, please forgive me. They cry, and before they die, they tremble in fear. It is so unfortunate. My father, when he was 70, he passed away. My father, he really cherished his friends. And he would never upset his friends. He would never do so. And they, they grew up in the same hometown. I told my father, Father, you have to believe in Jesus. I'll believe next time. My f I, drinking with my friends, that is the joy of the world. And that is the, how he connects with his friends. Uh, I'll believe Jesus next spring. Uh, next spring uh, is my, my friend's 60th birthday. I have to drink with him. Oh, uh, you know, Jesus doesn't like me drinking. That's why. That's why I will have a drink with my friend on his 60th birthday and I'll stop and I'll believe in Jesus. And then it'll pass to the next fall, next year fall. Oh, next year fall, I have to go to my friend's daughter's wedding. And so my my father really cherished his friends and so when I'm so thankful to God our house is in the countryside our house was very worn down and my older brother wanted to build a new house and so he didn't have enough money to buy to build a new house and I had my uncle who lives in Japan and who runs a business there and there was while there was the the world the World War Two, 
you know, he fled to Japan and he made, he made lots of money through his business. And my older brother, he asked our uncle, uncle, are we, our house is worn down and we're trying to build a new house. Can you help us out? And so he, com he, he became a complete Japanese person. He cut us off and says, I can't help you. Even when I heard it, you know, I would feel upset. You know, we're, we're family. But my uncle told my brother, instead, come and work at my company. I will give you your wage. That, that time, though, hourly wage was 10 times higher than of Korea. And my older brother, he ag agreed and said he'll work for him. And he went to Japan. And my older brother went to Japan. And during that brief time he went to Japan, my big brother told me, Hey, I'll be go while I'm in Japan, can you take care of father for me? And so I was in Daegu and I was starting the church in Daegu. And so there was a room, a small room for my father to stay at. And I told my big brother, Yes, big brother. Yes, I, I wanted to take care of father. And so while you're staying in Japan, I'll take care of father. And so he stayed at my, my place. And so my wife, so my wife sometimes will buy liquor for my, my father. And coming to church with the liquor is very strange. So she would hide the liquor in her skirt and then bring it to my father. My father, he called, he called me. He calls me by my daughter's name. Unsuk's father and I, I said yes father and I went to my father's room with my wife and my father he was laying on his bed and he was trying to get up and while he was trying to get up he he vomited and he vomited all the internal bleeding from his stomach and I never seen such thing in my life and he vomited all of this blood. And then my wife was crying and crying. And we wiped off the blood. And so we uh, set up new sheets of blankets for him and, lay, and then la laid him down. And I asked, Father, are you okay? And so he must have felt better because he vomited all the internal bleeding. And he says, I feel better. And I told my father, older brother is not here and if you depart from this world father you would can I you know, speak to you on this manner and the blood of Jesus I shared about the blood of Jesus with my father and I, what I'm so thankful about is that that day if my father was not at my house then what would I have done? Yes, I could have treated him, but that day when my father vomited all that blood, we wiped off all that blood for him. And an hour later, for one hour, I began to share the gospel and my father received the forgiveness of sin. And we lived in Daegu. And so our hometown is Hansan. And I felt like father cannot live longer and I, I thought it would be nice if my father can go to Sunsan, his hometown. And so I called the ambulance to take him there. And so we went to the home, our hometown. And then the next day after he, after we arrived in Sunsan, and so my daughter's name is Unsuk, and he calls me, my father calls me Unsuk's father. Oh, yesterday, the amb something called the ambulance or whatnot. I rode the ambulance and it was so comfortable. I know the roads are very rough coming here and I thought that I'll be, it'll be so difficult to get here but I'm so thankful that I came here in such so so peacefully. Can you sing some hymns for me? After my father received the forgiveness of sin, my big brother has been serving and r taking care of my father and I was the younger brother and so I'll always be somewhere else and I could not take care of my father. But I think in order for God to save my father, he called him to my place. I was so thankful. I got up in, got up in the morning. Yesterday, 
when, I, when we were coming down the road, that road was so rough. But the, the ambulance, you know, took, brought me here so comfortably. Hey, can you sing some hymns for me? These are words that would never come out of my father's mouth. But after my father, he quit, he quit drinking and he decided to believe in Jesus. I, we shed tears of joy as my father received the forgiveness of sin. And my father told me to call five of his friends. And I called five of his friends to come. And my father told his friends, I was born in this town and I have lived all of my life in this town. I love this town. because I had friends like you. My second son's Jesus, I, be, I decided to believe in him. I decided to believe in Jesus and I'll be going to heaven. I'll prepare some rooms in heaven. You should also believe in Jesus so that we can meet again in heaven and let's spend a good time in heaven again. And my friends, told, my friends told my father, you're not going to die. Let's live a longer life. Let's live, let's live a joyful life here. But my father, a few days later, he gave his last breath. My expertise is sharing the, the forgiveness of sin as a pastor. So how sad would I be if I couldn't share the forgiveness of sin with my father? And as I was riding the car, as I was riding the bus, there's this, there's this one elderly, late, elderly man who seemed so similar to my father, and I chased after him, and I saw him, but he was not my father. Because I, because I miss my father so much, I, my father will pop out of my dreams. And I'll get up, and, oh, Father, please stop coming in my dreams. And he no longer came in my dreams. if everyone else received the forgiveness of sin and not my father how painful would my heart have been when I think about that my father as my big brother was in Japan he came to my house and that's when he vomited his blood and I believe that that was God's plan so that he could receive forgiveness of sin oh when I see how God works in my life Oh, truly, this is God. And I am so thankful for the works of God in my life. Because God cannot live with us who is filthy. God, He wanted to cleanse us before He dwells with us. That's why He made Jesus to come to this world to cleanse us of our sins. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, freely by His grace, We are justified. I believe in these words exactly. Without any charge, freely by His grace, we, are, we have been made justified by the blood of Jesus. And we did not see with our eyes that our sins are washed, but the Bible says that our sins are washed, and God does not lie. And I believe that my sins are washed. And I do not say anything against this. And I can live a blessed life. Today, many people's hearts has been contaminated by Satan. And Satan deceives people saying that they are sinners. And as people, they still try to become righteous by keeping the law and praying. But we... All I did was simply accept the truth that Jesus has already made me righteous. There are people who say that to ask for forgiveness of sin, there are people who still do not believe that their sins are washed. But as long as we are inside of the words, as I preach this gospel, many churches, many pastors, at first they called us cults, but they received change, they opened their hearts. And they are overwhelmed and moved. And this gospel to spread across all the world. And after we finish our evening service, I'll be fly in the evening flight. I will go to Europe and I'm visiting several countries. 
And I'm so thankful to God. May you pray for me. And, and may you, so you may not go far, but may you go to your neighbors and speak of Jesus. And may you share and deliver the news of the, the good news of Jesus. Thank you, everyone.